All right, new project. New project. We got a lot going on. Yeah. We got access, logistics, yeah. very tight. Nightmare time. Not a whole lot of space yeah. for us to work with. We haven't been used to this, so we're gonna need you on the ball. I need you on top of the details. Okay. Okay. Logistics and just all encompassing. Every I need detail. You, I need you on top of <laughs> I need every, every single, single detail. detail. Got it. Yes. Okay. We'll do. Uh, this week we already have our lumber. We have demoed the patio. Yeah. What other deliveries do we have coming? Uh, well, we, footings. We have Goliath footings. that coming today. Uh, so we need to mark out our footings. They are coming hopefully around lunchtime. Yes. So we'll have those done. Mm -hmm. Lumber's back there. So I think we can start framing up ledger, stuff like that. I guess we'll shoot for framing tomorrow. Full day framing. Full day framing. And then I have the roof materials, rafters, beams, all that stuff getting delivered. Thursday, Okay. Uh, we will need a genie lift. Okay. Put that on your list, we'll maybe. Down. That's we'll one of those. Down. That's definitely one of those details that need you to be okay. on top of. When do you want it to here? Maybe Friday, because the beams will get here. We'll get them into the backyard. We'll have the genie lift here Friday, and we'll. We got a lot of beams. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Good one. Star Trek, I think. All right, I guess. I guess that's kind of it. You got anything else for me? I think that's it for this week. There's lots going on, but there is, there this is. week I think we're gonna we're, it's gonna be a framing week. So that's it. That's it. I guess that's it. That's it. All right, let's go. Detail person needs you on top of the details. Got it. All right, so we're all set up here on our new project. We have demoed the patio. It is in the dumpster, ready to get hauled away for recycling. We have hauled back all of our lumber. That was quite. A chore, I am sore. Hopefully no more of that. But we got Goliath Tech coming today. So first thing that we're gonna do is lay out our footings. Uh, we'll show you a couple of the very important parts that we need to make sure of because we have very sensitive footings here carrying some huge loads. So let's go. All right, Tom, come on. Yeah, go over there. Uh, drive that stake in. Yeah, we're gonna be one inch inside the uh, corner post. Like the golfers in this course are gonna get pretty annoyed by us. It was a nice shot though. The thing we really wanna make sure of here is the placement of especially these outer two footings. This center one is gonna carry the load of our ridge beam and because we are having this cantilevered beam on the corner, we wanna make sure that this is directly underneath of all of that load, carrying it straight down to the footing. Same thing on this outside. The rest of them, we want to be pretty close, but it's all gonna be drop beams cantilevered. So inch, two inches here and there, not a big deal. But these two especially, I wanna make sure are right on. Yeah? We got everything marked out. Goliath Tech is now here installing our piles. Everything is gonna hopefully go uh, really smoothly. We've got it marked out very accurately. And uh, let me show you how they make sure they're installing it right on our marks. So you can see here, this pile right here, we have rebar in the spot because that one we need very precise. What they do is pull off two feet in each direction and put these stakes so once they pull this out and start installing the pile, they can then measure off of it. The mark will be gone, the rebar will be gone, but they can measure off in both directions, make sure they're right at that mark, and we can make sure that this thing is locked in for justice.
We got all of our Goliath Tech helical piles installed yesterday. They are good to go. Now we are on to framing. This is gonna be a really interesting framing job because we have all of those specific point loads for our roof. So we'll walk you through that whole thing. Let me show you what we got so far. Right now, me and Jose are just getting some of our beams set. So Tom went around with the laser. We've got all of our helical piles set at the right elevation so that our beams can just sit right inside of that saddle. So Jose, you ready to get this on here? You wanna move it a little closer first? Tom, you wanna help us over here? It's a little heavy. Thanks, Tom. Gonna need a bigger hammer for that. We've got all pro wood going down here for our beams and our joists. Once again, we've said this before, we'll say it again. You wanna make sure any critical structure point like this, a beam, a joist, ground contact. So we've got all ground contact lumber here. The other thing you wanna make sure of is that all of your seams, this is longer than 20 feet, so we need to splice our beam. We wanna make sure that they fall over top of our saddle so that all of those points are fully supported. We've got our beams and everything leveled, nailed up. We are ready to start installing our joists and uh, this part goes super quick as you all know, but we have right here a uh, nice little detail going around this fireplace. We don't want to structurally attach to it, so let me show you what we got. So we'll have on this side of the fireplace a double joist that'll essentially act as a beam. We'll have the same thing on this side and then we'll put hangers across here, double two by 10 about an inch away from the fireplace. That's gonna act as our structural support as we bring the joist out this way in front of the fireplace. Attaching to brick can always be really tricky. This is a good way to get around this, not structurally attached to it. Be good to go. For this, for the beam that you gotta do here, don't put this one on yet, so that way you can nail from the outside. Yeah. Look how it gets here. It does? Yeah. Okay. Tom's in charge now. It's gonna be a little tight getting a uh, getting a hanger on there on that side. But two inches is good. All right, we'll do it the way Tom says. Tom had his own way he wanted to do this. What we're gonna do is make it, I guess, a little bit easier to put our double across the back. Just do singles. We'll put our double across the back in front of the fireplace, and then then we'll laminate these. We'll put the other uh, ply on it. So multiple ways to skin a cat or whatever. I don't know why anybody would be worried about even one way to skin a cat, but you know, that's construction for you. Here we've got the joist going up on this main section, which is gonna have the roof, and we've got right in the center of our whole deck, this triple joist. That's gonna also act as a beam because on this side and that side, we are gonna have six by sixes that go up and support our ridge. Now this is uh, one of the first times we've done a structural ridge beam. Because of this interesting roof detail, we need to have a structural ridge. So instead of a typical two by 10 micro lamb, we are using a five and a quarter by 12 LVL. So that needs to be supported on both ends, both load bearing, six by six is gonna go up on both sides. And uh, that's why we need this triple joist right in the center and this needs to be precise. Really cool little interesting detail here. We're uh, always using pro wood and what I've just found right here, see this, it's got a little plug in it. Wonder what that's for, right? That's because all of these lumber units get third party tested. So occasionally you'll see these little plugs in here that's where they've taken a core sample and they have determined how deep that treatment has gone into the lumber. And if it's not deep enough, they will send the unit back and they will retreat it. Pretty cool to see these uh, little things here. See them every once in a while, but that's how you know this, uh, this whole unit has been tested. So we know it's treated in for justice. All right, let's, let's nail these bad boys together. Now we've got double joists beams on both sides. We've got a beam carrying across in front of the fireplace. Now we can attach our joist run off of this. Nothing will be attached to the fireplace. All of this will get double joist hangers. So uh, right now it's just temporary. Don't worry that there's no joist hangers yet. They'll get on there. Don't worry. Okay. 
we'll get them on there. Freestanding off of our fireplace wall and it makes all those connections a whole lot easier. our beams back here because we have our posts set for the roof and whenever you're handling some heavy material like that it's always useful to have a machine so that's why we've got the dingo and we've got Anthony so uh, with those machines on both ends we are good to go check out what we got here <laughs> how's a heavy boy we'll drag the next one back all right we have all of our posts installed here here you can see what we talked about in the framing stage where we have our tripled end joists which act as a beam. We have uh, installed some flashing tape over top of that. And now we have installed our six by six post base which is lagged down into our beam. And then we can attach our post to this. We have it braced up because next thing is putting these beams up in the air. Tom is out getting the genie lift right now so we'll be able to Get these beams up in the air, no problem. But uh, you know, I think they did. I ordered uh, a couple of them are like bigger and smaller. So I think they just did like, one was a 16 and a and a 10. For inside, I think they maybe just sent a 26. Like there was, was really only supposed to be one long one for the front. Yeah, this is a long one and that's a long one. So and this. <laughs> now the ridge is only 16 feet. No, this is this side. The street is this. Oh uh, yeah. One for there, one for the ridge. Yeah, that makes sense. I think this was 24. I did this one, I don't know, 28, 26, whatever. We're gonna go ridge, other one. We'll drag the next one back. Get that ratchet strap on it. You're doing anything that's that's very heavy, or it's count to 10. <laughs> you get just... anything done in 10 seconds. <laughs> I thought it was like when, like when you're talking to a little kid and you're like, Hey, sport. <laughs> oh. What's up, sport? That's rude. No, I meant because I'm like a hyper athlete. Didn't you see me carrying that beam with the machine? <laughs> Mindset, anything's possible. Oh, Jesus. Put your end down. Come on. Oh, there you go. We will once we get that high. I'm, I'm sitting on it. I'm not past the. Not past it. Now. Or 
First one went up pretty good. Woo! Nice shot, Kato. <laughs> we got the member member tournament going on today, so uh, we're cheering here for Kato. Make us proud, okay? All right, we got our first two beams up here yesterday afternoon. Now we're ready to set the rest of them. You can see right here, we have this temporary support post. We are going to hanger our beam going back, and then this is coming out. That is gonna be our cantilever where we have this phantom post. So uh, we have it just, I really wanted to hang the other beams while this was floating. It was like, can we, can we please just put a temporary support post here? I said, okay, fine. We're gonna get this up here and then we have to take this out and hopefully we don't have any sag. We don't have any problems going on because this is a huge cantilever for this to just be floating. So you're gonna have to wait for the next vlog for us to take this out see if it all holds up and the engineers and the architects were right and that we built it correctly. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned, say a prayer for us. Till next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.